Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this is lesson three of unit six, slope intercept form. You know it says 6.4 in your booklet, and we're gonna be off by 0.1 uh, as we go through here, just to try to not confuse the, the lesson numbers and stuff. Um, so this is lesson three, um, slope intercept form. Uh, we're gonna start with a word problem and start by kind of drawing it all out uh, and then talking about what each piece um, means in the line and how we can interpret that in terms of an equation. Um, so we are essentially going to um, be able to write a line in a form where we can pick out the slope and pick out the y-intercept immediately um, just by looking at it. We don't have to do anything to it at all. Um, so let's start by looking at this problem where Jason goes to a movie with his friends um, and when he goes to pay for his ticket, he's told that the theater is offering memberships. Uh, the cost of a membership is 30 bucks. If he signs up for a membership, then he can buy a ticket for $5. But if he doesn't buy a membership, then the movie tickets are 10. So what we want to do is we want to draw a couple of lines uh, on this graph. Now I'm not going to scroll down right now um, because um, we don't need to see that part of it um, or like I won't focus on the graph part I'll be flipping back and forth uh, but I'll draw the graph here um, so we are going to um, start by thinking about the limitations of what we've got so when we're talking about money we can't go negative money we can't pay them negative money so we don't have to think about going in the negative values uh, and you can't buy negative tickets, right? You can only buy one, two, three, four tickets. You can't buy negative five tickets. So that means that we're only gonna be talking about the upper right quadrant. So my graph actually um, can look something like this, right? It is only that portion, this portion here that we're looking at. So if you draw lines on the left portion and the bottom uh, of that graph, I know there are other lines on it, but that is the portion that we're looking at. Um, and what we have for um, the dependent variable, um, which always goes on the y-axis, um, is the cost. Uh, the cost depends on the number of tickets that are bought. So C is equal to cost, and that is the dependent variable. And N is going to be the tickets, and that is the independent variable. So I can only buy increments of one ticket, right? I can't buy half a ticket. So let's go one ticket, two, three, four, five, six, seven tickets. Okay, uh, mark this as five so that I have a general reference point. Um, and then the cost is going to go up from there. Um, the increments are at about 10. So let's go, I don't know, maybe like $80 or something like that. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's ninety dollars. So we've got fifty bucks. We got ninety over here. So one more we got eighty. We can just mark some points so that we have a general idea uh, when we look at it where we're at. Um, now to draw those lines we need to come up with some equations. So that is this portion of the question here. What is the equation for each line? So um, the question says that the cost of a movie ticket is $10 without a membership. So the cost, I'll do this in blue, the cost with no membership, so let's just go N, the cost with no membership is equal to $10 times the number of tickets that you buy, right? There is no initial membership fee here uh, and I'll tell you later why I'm writing plus zero here but just note that there's no initial membership fee so it's just ten dollars per ticket um, the cost of a, with a membership is equal to five dollars per ticket plus the thirty dollar membership and it's important that we have the thirty here um, when we write out our it in this form and I'll explain why that is as well so now we can plot these lines on this graph. Um, let's do the blue line first. Now, if we buy one ticket, the cost is $10. If we buy zero tickets, the cost is $0. That's not true with a membership. If you buy 
two tickets uh, or zero tickets with the membership, um, you still have paid thirty dollars, so it's not completely uh, cost free. Uh, two tickets is twenty. Three tickets is thirty. Four is forty. Five is fifty. Six is sixty. Seven is seventy. Eight is eighty. You guys get the idea. It's a pretty much straight line. I've done my best <laughs> with what I have. So uh, it is a linear relationship, um, a straight line. Now. Uh, it crosses the y-intercept at point zero, right? The y-intercept is this line and it crosses at the point zero, which is why our point or y-intercept here is zero. This is last portion is what we're gonna call the y-intercept, okay? So because if we buy zero tickets with the, the red uh, line, our cost is still gonna be $30. So one, two, three, we still start here if with zero tickets. After that, it's going to be two tickets for every $10 or one for every five. So if I go two tickets, I go up to here-ish. I go another two tickets, it's going to be $50. If I go to six tickets, it's going to be $60, I believe, yes. So that is where they cross. If you buy another two tickets, and it's going to be $70, and it's going to be worth it. My line is looking something like that. Okay, so they cross at about $60. Okay, so the point that would make them completely equal, um, as this question asks down here, how many movies would Jason need to, need to watch to make the memberships worthwhile? Uh, it would be six movies to make it worthwhile, right? Yes, it lines up with the six. So six movies to make it worthwhile. If you're planning on watching more than six movies, it's worth it to buy the membership. If you're not, um, then don't buy the membership and you'll save money. Um, now, the last portion that we added on here and here, those are known as the y-intercepts. You can see from the graph that that is where it crosses the y-axis, at zero for the blue line and at 30 for the red line. So these are the y-intercept portion of the um, slope-intercept form. This portion here and here, the five and the 10, those are the slopes. Those are the slopes. Every one you go over, you go up 10. Every one you go over, you go up five for the red line. Uh, that is the definition of a slope, rise over run. Um, so just from looking at these lines and the way that we built the equations, we can pick out what the slope and what the y-intercept is. And we can use this principle to apply it, not just to word problems, but to regular lines that you're given. Let's go to the next couple of examples here. So we are given a new type of equation and I'm going to talk about this a lot. I'm going to say it a lot. It is y equals mx plus b, okay? So these two are just a point. This is the slope and this is the y-intercept, intercept, okay? It is very important um, to know when I talk about B, I'm talking about the y-intercept, M is the slope, as you guys are aware, and then Y and X are points on our line. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to follow along down here and write equations given what the information that it tells us. So uh, the graph of a linear function has a slope of two and a y-intercept of five. That means that we can write our uh, equation as y equals m. m is the slope of 2x, and the intercept is 5. So if you're given, if you're asked to write the equation of a line with a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 5, boom. It's just that easy. Um, you put the slope where the m is and the um, intercept where the b is in our equation. Uh, if we have a linear function with a slope of minus 4 and intercept of 5, we would have y is equal to negative 4x plus 5. Slope of negative 4, y-intercept of 5. The y and the x just stay where they are um, to represent the points 
uh, on the line. Um, let's continue. We have the graph of a linear function has a slope of two thirds, intercept of minus eight. Y is equal to two thirds X minus eight, right? Y equals M X plus B. That's all we need to do. That is our equation for that one. Um, let's see here. What is our next one? We can graph. The graph of linear function has a slope of negative 1 over 7 and an intercept of negative 6. y is equal to negative 1 over 7x minus 6. Given the slope, given the intercept, we can write the equation. Uh, we have one more. Graph of a linear function that has a slope of negative 1 and set over 7 and intercept of the origin. The origin has a y value of 0. Therefore, it would cross at, the y-intercept is zero. We don't need to write anything at all. Uh, it would be y is equal to negative one over seven x. Okay. That is all you would need to write. If you did add the zero, that would be okay as well because it crosses at the origin y point uh, of zero. Uh, we could also write this as y is equal to negative x over seven because negative one times x is negative x. Um, just some other ways to be aware of that you can write this um, because it might be given in different ways in different formats on quizzes or tests or assignments or problems in the textbook uh, and things like that. Let's go to actually graphing some of these. Okay, so we're given um, the lines um, in the equation form and we're going to actually draw them out. So my fancy grid here. Let's see, let's go to, let's go to six to be safe. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now that we have our grid, we can draw our line. So the first line is y equals one third x plus two. So we're gonna start at the y-intercept of two. And we're going to use the slope to count our way to the line. So it goes up one and over three, up one and over three, up one and over three. So our line is gonna look something like that. Okay, that is line one. Our second line, y equals four x minus three. So let's start at our value, our, our y-intercept of negative three. And we're going to go up four and over one. So one, two, three, four over one. One, two, three, four over one. And our line is gonna look something like that. That's a pretty wiggly line, but you get the idea. All right, easy as that. Last one we're given here. Uh, y is equal to negative three over two x plus four. So let's start at our y-intercept of plus four, right up there. Uh, negative three over two, so we're gonna go down three. One, two, three, and over two. One, two, three, and over two, like that. And then our blue line, ooh, I missed the last one, but that's okay. It's going to look something like that. So we've drawn the lines. Uh, the steps are to plot the y-intercept and then um, use the slope to count our way, rise over run from there. Remembering that if you have a negative value for your slope that you're going to be counting down and then over and not up and over um, as it should be pointed down for a negative slope. And let's see here, a couple more problems. But with these ones, what we're asked to do is we're asked to write the equation when we're just given the graph. Okay, so we're just given um, a picture of it and we wanna know what the slope is. Um, you can see that the intercept for this problem on the left is a little bit off-centered, actually for both of them. Uh, so it actually crosses the y-intercept at minus four. So b is equal to minus four. And then if we count up and over um, where it crosses points, it goes up three and over to the left two. So the slope is negative three halves. So that means that our um, equation for the left graph is y is equal to negative 3 halves x minus 4. Okay, y equals mx plus b. All right, let's move on to the next one. 
Again, the origin is offset a little bit, so it looks strange, but the crosses at B is equal to negative 3, or the intercept is equal to negative 3. And it seems to go up 2 and over 1 and cross at exactly another corner. So the slope is equal to 2 over 1, which is just 2. So that means that our equation can be written as y is equal to m, well, y is equal to 2x minus 3, y is equal to mx plus b. Oops, pardon me. So that is the answer to that problem. Let's go to the last portion of the lesson, where we have a local gym. Uh, the local gym, uh, Krim has to pay $99 for a startup fee plus $29 a month to use the gym. Uh, we want to write an equation uh, that shows the cost in total dollars depending on how many months he uses the gym. So the cost is going to be equal to $29 every month, which is N, plus the $99 startup fee. I'm kind of getting the idea that we have a pattern going. We have the y-intercept and we have the slope. Um, we don't necessarily have to graph it, but if we needed to, this is we could do it really easily. Uh, we'd have to draw a very large graph or space out our points, but it is definitely doable. Um, the next question asks that it says he kept his membership for 23 months. What was the total cost? So the cost is equal to $29 times 23 months plus his initial $99 investment. Uh, that would be a total of $766 for the almost two years of um, his gym membership. Um, Seems like a lot. Maybe you can do like a YouTube workout or something. Anyway, uh, the next question says that the total cost was $505. How many months did Kareem use the gym? Uh, so what we're going to do is instead of having the N value, we have the C value. So uh, the cost was $505, which is equal to 29N plus 99. We're gonna subtract 99 from both sides so that we can have our numbers, um, we can start to isolate n. So that would be 406 is equal to 29n. Divide both sides by 29. We get n all by itself. n is equal to 14. So that is 14 months that he would have had his membership if he spent exactly $505. Um, now, what it wants to know for the next question is if it's possible that the total cost could be $600. Now, according to the gym contract that we've all read, you cannot have a gym membership for half a month. It just doesn't work that way. You have to have it for a whole month. So to have exactly $600, our N, or our number of months, will have to come out to an exact whole number with no decimals. It, um, so let's find out. Uh, $600 cost, it's equal to $29 a month times the n number of months, we don't know, plus $99. We're gonna subtract 99 from both sides, so we're left with 501 is equal to 29 to, times n. Again, divide both sides by 29, and we find out that n is equal to 17.27, dot, 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 it continues on. It is a very long number, I think it's actually irrational. Um, so that means that it is not possible for his uh, bill to be exactly $600. Just doesn't make sense. You can't pay for it that way. Um, has to be uh, a whole number times 29 plus $99 for the startup fee. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you were able to pick up uh, what the slope-intercept form really means and how we can use it uh, to solve problems. If you guys have questions, definitely send me an email or uh, you can ask me in person when you see me. Um, but uh, yeah, get down to it. Thanks very much.